they disagree on everything, it seems like. Mm-hmm. They're disagreeing on vaccines, masks, where, where spending should go, school, public schools, charter schools. You know, and, and I'm not even saying a stance, but the, our political system is very divisive right now, probably mm-hmm. at the height of everything. But this is the issue that everybody's aligned on. What about this issue has aligned everybody when we're still in such a state of division amongst the general public right. and confusion amongst the, the general public? Mm-hmm. Why is this the issue that's bringing politicians together? Because, uh, because this is about the extension of American power in the world and whether you're – now. Now, Trump himself, of course, has said and uh, that he admires Putin. In other words, he's not supporting Joe Biden, uh, but much of his uh, much of the, his allies support um, uh, uh, NATO uh, in the Ukraine and the use of these Nazis and so forth. Uh, Congress, by the way, does have a ban on funding the Azov Battalion and Ukrainian Nazis, but the administration is ignoring it. George Washington University just released a 112-page study documenting how these Ukrainian Nazis are embedded in in uh, the Ukrainian military in such a way as that they the, nobody can detect them, so that they get the training that the United States wants to give them. And then, and then this this is the other thing. Twelve page study. Yeah, and they really went into it, and it's clear that the U.S. is doing this. One, one thing I'm, mm-hmm. I, I, I think I've been a little neglectful on, uh, Kari, is that I, I want to also tell people, in just in terms of this, uh, the whole dishonesty in uh, you know power grab of this whole thing. In, in the late 1980s, when Gorbachev was premier of uh, the, the end of the Soviet Union, the, mm-hmm. United, the Reagan administration said, look, we would like East Germany and West Germany, which had been divided since World War II, yeah. right? Uh, East Germany being under the control of the Soviets, and um, we would like to bring them back together. Do you object? He said, as long as you agree to not move NATO any closer to the Russian borders than they already are, I will support it. And they said, deal. And, you know, and the Reagan administration for, kept their word on that, you know, and uh, they began the process of reunifying Germany. And uh, George Bush, when he became president afterwards for one term, he did too. But when Bill Clinton came in, he says, oh, I says, I don't care what they agreed on. He said, uh, 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 I'm going to do what I want to do. And he started moving NATO east. And then uh, it con- a- afterwards, NATO moved up and they put NATO now right on the border of Russia, going up from the, the Scandinavian countries and the Baltic Sea all the way down to the Black Sea. Mm. And so and now the U.S. has put, you know, put uh, massive missile bases and, uh, and apparently there's two missile silos you know, which means larger scale missiles, mm-hmm. one in Romania and one in Poland. They've got these missile batteries that can fire cruise missiles and all sorts of things. Those go a thousand miles. They can hit, they can hit ver- most of uh, Russian cities, you know. And they've put all this huge military emplacement, troop formations, and Bi- Biden just moved more troops there. But he said, well, we're not going to put them in into uh, – into Ukraine, American troops won't be fighting in there, but they can be shooting missiles. They, they can be running aircraft. <laughs> they can be shooting n- yeah. from naval artil- artillery or n- naval aircraft uh, and still participate in and, some and, way or other. But, you know, he, he acts like they're going to be there for humanitarian. You don't need the 82nd Airborne Division for humanitarian work, you know. There's going to be something going on there. And so uh, – the United States repeatedly broke. And so when uh, Putin has been saying, look, we want to guarantee that Ukraine will not become NATO because once a country is NATO, all the other NATO countries are treaty bound to use its military to support that country if it's invaded. Mm. So once once they're in NATO, that's a, the United States is saying we will send our army in to protect your country. Yeah. Um, and um, – and that's uh, w- w- 
a pretext for U.S. setting up bases and then the United States takes control of the Ukrainian military. That's how the whole thing works. And, and then let me let me say this. And, and, and the point that I was going to say even uh, earlier, first off, I mean, so much of this, I'm going we're going to keep driving that whole point home of propaganda yeah. because even in propaganda, as we find, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the government or posture and say we'll never work with uh, any any nation that uses child labor or, 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 or sweatshop labor or something like that. And then they'll turn around and yeah. So like, all right, technically corporation or nation, you're not working with them, but then you're going to subcontract to somebody that's going to subcontract to subcontract to the company that's going to do that. Mm-hmm. It, it, so so to say that you're going to disassociate imposture like that Mm -hmm. but still support and being black in america we saw that actually after the fall of reconstruction it it was you know um the the stance of many of the as they say i guess northern uh politicians at the time was not a stance of we're against jim crow or anything it was very understanding furthermore supportive in many ways Mm -hmm. Because the thought process is if, you know, Lyndon Johnson, you know, if as long as those poor white guys feel like they're better than those black guys, then we have a safe nation. So that's something that they can do. And that's cool because it keeps order and restraint in our nation, Mm -hmm. quote unquote, the race problem, Mm -hmm. as it was labeled then. And this has been a play across the world. And in reference to the whole concept of the invasion of the country as I really have a trouble with that whole term terrorism because it's so hard to like, mm-hmm. what do you label a terrorist and what do you label not a terrorist or terrorist act? But uh, bringing it to more people's attention more recently, the George, during the George Floyd, after George Floyd murder, you know, you had the you had the guy in the, in the black hoodie on and all black and he was bashing out windows of, of the Target store. And they're like, who's that guy? That guy needs to be stopped. And then you later find out that that's a police officer. Mm hmm. Things like that happen all the time. So it's like, okay, as long as Russia doesn't invade, we're cool. Mm -hmm. But who's to say that some of these NATO troops, some of those other forces Mm -hmm. come in and act as if, Mm -hmm. you know, I put on a Russian suit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to act as if I am Russian Mm -hmm. and I'm invading Mm -hmm. because this has been played time and time and time and time again. There were no weapons of mass destruction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The more that I found a, you know, beautiful documentary on Vietnam that uh, that PBS did a couple years ago and and, and and sad, like, I mean, family members, my uncles and stuff like the soldiers didn't even know why they were there. The Viet Cong and a lot of the Americans they didn't know what the hell was going on. You know, something that was held up since France, like even further back, as you say, going back to World War One, which in my lens and especially in Afrocentricity dealt a whole lot with colonization of Africa and right in, 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 in European nations wanting their fair share of Africa and certain nations feeling like I was left out. I'm getting my cut of these natural resources in Africa. You know, the root of how I see world war one, which led to world war two. It was about colonialism. Yes. So, so this, this same posturing, Mm -hmm. you know, and these same stances, as Lyndon Johnson lost the hearts and minds in support of Americans and, and things were different then with mm-hmm. news and media and, and, and seeing these death tolls and even the anti-war movement that many uh, people like Rich Shea, um, my father, I'm guessing yourself, started, you know, Edwin Starr, war. What is it good for? I mean, that started then because people just didn't even understand. It's not like, you know, nobody's, you know, it, it's not a direct attack. And even right. now, as we know more about what Pearl Harbor was, that wasn't what the movie presents itself as either. Um, how, how, the propaganda is a key element in this. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's that's what leads me to, you know, knowing that these politicians that are adversarial on almost every issue mm-hmm. can come together on this. 